Hi, it's Pastor Greg with my dear friend Braxton, up, our family ministries uh, director here at Buffalo Free Church, and we want to take a pause for parenting. This is to give you some encouragement during especially this Christmas season, this COVID season, and we want to focus on that. Now, one of the things that happens to me is I often get parents who come in and go, Pastor Greg, what can we do? Our kid has walked away from God, or their hearts just aren't um, on fire. Do you ever get that, Braxton? Absolutely, absolutely. Even experiencing that myself, seeing past students and stuff who kind of walk away from, from the faith can be so discouraging. And we want to just encourage you yep. together. So one thing I want you to think about, uh, parents, is this. We often take too much credit for when things go good and too much blame when things go bad. Be in balance on that, folks. Your, your child is a person who can make their own decisions, but there are things you can do to help influence them along the way. In fact, Braxton, I believe there's some scripture you would like to share yeah, right now. Yeah, absolutely. So Proverbs, a great source of wisdom. Proverbs 22, 6, it'll be on the screen for you too. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there. But it says, train up a child in the way he should go, or she, even when he or she is old, he or she will not depart from it. That is both an encouraging passage and a scary passage. Because often parents, when their child does walk away, they blame themselves. Absolutely. And they're like, what did I do wrong? Did, did this uh, proverb not come true? But I understand proverbs were written to be uh, a truth that we can take with us, a, a general truth. And it doesn't mean that um, your kids won't struggle. Absolutely. It, it doesn't mean they're not going to have hard times. So let's talk about what are some things that we can do to help train up our children so that when they're old, they'll return to the faith. So Braxton, you got a couple ideas. Absolutely. So I think we should take six hours a day and just force our kids to take in a classroom setting. No, I'm just kidding. Parenting can be challenging. Parenting, Parenting can be so Parenting challenging. Parenting is you know, challenging. I don't know. I just deal with students. It's fine. But well, I you think can it's... Send them home. <laughs> I can I get to send them home with you guys hopped up on sugar. I'm so sorry. This is an opportunity for me to apologize for that. No, but I think it's so important for us to take things that are normal parts of our lives and leverage those and tie those into the gospel and how can we be reminded of Christ in the midst of Christmas time is a great opportunity for us to slow down and point our kids to the realities of Christmas and what Jesus has done. Things like looking at Christmas lights, driving around. I know growing up there were so many traditions I had and uh, one of those traditions was driving around looking at Christmas lights with my family. And as you do that and you listen to songs and take in the sweet um, just light displays that people have, you can be reminded that Jesus was the light of the world sent to save us. And you can remind your kids of that as you do things like that. So those kind of traditions, even things like kindness, like having a calendar of kindness throughout your year or Christmas time. I know with COVID, it makes it challenging, uh, but we used to carol and bring Christmas cookies to people in our neighborhood as I was growing up and I'm terrible at singing. Um, and it was awkward, but it was an opportunity for us to say, hey, we love you. Uh, we want to make much of Jesus and we want to deliver, make sure the cookies are delicious. You know, we want to deliver these delicious cookies to you. So just finding ways for you as a family to be serving your neighbors. And again, you got to be careful with COVID stuff. Uh, but even praying for your neighborhood, praying for your neighbors, and just finding ways um, of blessing those who are around you each and every day. And even taking another step, um, there are ways to serve together as a family, like at the food shelf yeah, or absolutely. at uh, a Toys for Tots drive or things here at the church. One of the great things we do is the Christmas boxes, and it's such a joy to see families come together and serve at that. But working side by side with your child gives you an opportunity to talk about the things of Christ and to show that Jesus is real. I remember uh, one family shared the story. They, they came up to a speaker and they said, uh, our kid doesn't walk with Jesus anymore. And 
the speaker thought, oh, they're going to ask me, what did I do wrong? And the father paused. He goes, it's because I gave my child the church. I didn't give my child Jesus. Wow. Now, we that want you powerful. to bring your kids to the church. We, we want to do everything we can to be the best friend and greatest support, greatest cheerleader parents ever had. Absolutely. That's our goal. And Absolutely. we want to introduce the kids to Jesus. But the, the fact is, don't just bring them to church because you have to go to church. Give them Jesus. One of the ways I'd like to suggest is create ways to remember. We're going to have a workshop on this in, in the future, one of these pause for parentings in the future on it. But I want you to, to give you the idea of making a memory. Mm -hmm. Every time you see God work in your family, you need to put it down. You need to find ways to hang on to it. I know one family, they would make uh, um, shadow boxes and it was a glass box and they would look for things where they saw God act. So like, for example, That's they great. were in a financial crisis yeah. and at the last minute, God sent uh, money. So they put the cancel check up there. They're, they had their daughter nearly got hit by a car, but God intervened by catching her jumper strap on the door handle and pulling her back into the car right as the car went by, uh, the other car went by. And so they cut that off when the jumper couldn't be worn That's anymore crazy. and they put it in the, the box. What are your memories uh, that, that your kids can walk in and go, you see, this is where God worked in our family. This is where God worked mm -hmm. in our family. This is where God worked in our family. And they can bring their friends in and say, look, I want to share with you how God is part of our family. Absolutely. So just, just an idea. Yeah, there's always that, that saying, like, they can hear a sermon, but when they see a sermon, that's really when it connects. So modeling our faith at home, I think of my parents and stuff, that's a huge, huge impact that, that will have on your children. And so as we strive to follow Jesus imperfectly, and that's part of it, let them see some of that imperfection. And uh, as we strive to do that, our, our kiddos are watching. And so you're modeling your faith for your kids. Um, and uh, you can also cling to Christ, uh, who is our hope too. He's the one who is changing us and shaping us and molding us as well. Any ideas on how to anchor their kids in the Savior, anchor their kids into the gospel? Abs absolutely. So one of those ways I think that's really helpful is Empowered Homes, which I've mentioned in our moments uh, for marriage earlier, has these sweet Advent cards that you can print out that are really short and simple kind of conversation starters to begin to have conversations at the dinner table, during the car rides, and to really ask some questions like, how does Jesus influence um, areas in my life? You can share your own experiences with your kids, but also ask them and listen to them. Sometimes we don't give opportunities for our kids to share what's going on in their lives. Um, and so that's inviting them into that conversation and uh, pointing them to Jesus and how Jesus influences things. And I think it's just a great tool um, that we hope will help you. And it'll be in the descriptions down below. You can just click it and it'll take you there and you can print them off and, and download them that way. Now, as we shared with you, we want to be the best friend, greatest support we can be to you as parents. And I want to share with you some of our online tools that we can give you. First of all, our children's ministry has an online version for you to watch at home to encourage your hearts. Absolutely. I also created a thing called the Christmas Corner. And right now what it does is the Christmas Corner takes you behind the scenes on Christmas and, and the ability to say, well, Jesus is the light of the world and why do we put up Christmas lights and why do we do this and why do we do that? And, and the story of the candy cane and things like that that you can use as both a family or as uh, you listen and share it with your family. Mm -hmm. Also, I've created a thing called Kids Christmas Corner with Pastor Greg or something to that effect. I have written three stories based on the the events of the Christmas story, but I put a child in there to kind of tell the story. So you'll have to listen to those as well. They come out the 21st, the 23rd, and the 28th. And so they all hook together. So they're in order, so you'll want to listen to them in order. Also, don't you do something monthly? Yeah, I'm just starting a monthly newsletter uh, for parents. Just 
helpful podcast, things for you to equip you. I know life is so busy right now. Sometimes you guys drive into the cities for work or just even 15 minutes to work. Just great opportunities for you to listen to something as you drive, just to reflect and equip you as a parent, um, and also just different ways for you to be encouraged, and some tools, kind of like the Advent cards that we talked about, just tools for you to really succeed in parenting your kids to love and treasure Jesus, and we don't want you to be alone in that. And so if you'd like to sign up for that, just give me an email. It's braxton at buffalofree.org, and I'll sign you up for that monthly newsletter. It's not going to be every week. We're not going to bombard you, but just once a month, some helpful tools and resources for you as, as a parent. And you might be sitting there going, I really need to go to a parenting conference. Did you know right now media has a lot of parenting workshops that you can take in the privacy of your home? So we'd encourage you to do that. If you don't have Right Now Media, contact us here at the church and we'll Absolutely. send out a link to you and help you have your own parenting conference and your own marriage conferences at home. Is there anything else, my friend? I think that's it, but stay tuned for things that are happening. Um, we just want to really help you as parents succeed in, in raising your kids. And uh, if there's anything ever, that you need to just reach out to us for. We're always here for you. We love you. We treasure you. Um, and you are such a blessing to our church family. And we pray for you constantly as you seek to raise your kids to honor God. Pause for parenting and marriage moments. Our goal is to at least have one of these a month out yeah. for you, maybe even more. And so let us know if you like them. And uh, from us here at the church, uh, I and Braxton and the staff want to wish you first a merry, merry Christmas Absolutely. and a very happy new year. The happiest. And may the blessings of God be upon you. Absolutely. See you guys later. Bye.